history of computers and programs. So back in the 1800s, people began using electricity, and then they created switches to turn objects on and off, like a, kind of like a light switch. The switch controls whether or not electricity ran through a wire, and in the early 1900s, switches were created that can be controlled electronically rather than using a manual switch. And these electronic switches were soon used for performing simple calculations. A positive voltage meant on, or one, and a zero voltage meant off, or zero. And these zeros and ones became known as bits, or binary digits. The first electronic computers from the 1930s to 40s built up entire rooms and consisted of thousands of electronic switches called circuits. And today, an integrated circuit, an IC chip, can contain billions of switches. Moore's law is the observation that the number of transistors in a dense integrated circuit doubles roughly every 18 months. Circuits called processors were created which were able to execute calculations or instructions. And these instructions are stored in memory and each byte, which is 8 bits in memory, is assigned a unique number known as an address. A program is a programmer created sequence of instructions. For example, your Java code is a program and it's created by you, the programmer, and it's a sequence of instructions that, that the JVM understands and executes. In the 1940s, programmers wrote programs consisting of ones and zeros called machine instructions, and a sequence of these machine instructions formed an executable program, meaning a program that's able to be ran. And assembly language was created where programs were automatically translated to machine instruction by a program called an assembler. In the 1950s, programmers created high-level languages such as Fortran and COBOL, which made programming much easier. And then the programmers created compilers, which took this high-level program that's easy to understand, and it converted it into an executable program that, that the machine could understand. Later, more high-level programs followed, such as C and C++. In order to run a program on different processor types, the programmer had to compile this program on each processor separately, creating multiple executable files. For example, if you had a C program that you created, you would have to compile it separately on a MacBook, on a Windows, or a Linux computer in order for it to run on that, on that computer. So there was a need for a programming language that could be written just once and ran anywhere. And this is why Java was invented. The Java compiler creates an executable using the machine instruction of a virtual processor, and this is called bytecode. So when you create your Java programs, you're creating the .java file. When you compile it, it creates bytecode, which is the .class file, and this is the executable file that the Java virtual machine can run on any processor, and it emulates another processor, and it's capable of executing the bytecode. It interprets it, and, and it can run it anywhere where there's a JVM installed. So you can run your Java program on Windows, Linux, MacBook, a toaster oven, refrigerator, on a mobile device, a tablet. It doesn't matter where, it'll still run. And this makes Java a very highly portable programming language.